Big C applied the more advanced mathematical analysis, computational hardware and software, and the availability of big data have made possible commodities machines that can learn to operate as investment managers, financial analysts, and traders. Today, we are going to explain the following paper wrote by Robert Culkin and Sanjeev Ardas in 2017. Now, let's explain the objective of this paper. That is to train a fully connected feed forward deep learning neural network so we can reproduce the plug and shows option price formula to a high degree of accuracy. At this time, you must know what is the plug and shows model. But if you don't remember, don't worry, we are going to explain it to you again. The plug and shows model is an equation used in financial mathematics to determine the price of certain financial assets. It was used to estimate the present value of an European call or put option. So we can continue with the objective of the paper. They also offer a brief introduction to the neural networks and some details on the various choices of hyperparameters that make the model as accurate as possible. The huge success of artificial intelligence has arisen from the confluence of three factors. First, mathematics of neural networks supports very fast calibration, since neural networks are calibrated by minimizing some loss function, the optimization of this function is needed. The bigger the neural networks, the larger the number of parameters that need to be fit. Second, deep learning refers to the number of layers in neural networks, often as high as four layers. Decades ago, Neural nets were able to handle one or two layers. The ability to compute large neural networks is possible today thanks to the increase of computational speed. Third, training machines to replicate and improve on complex human behavior using neural networks is only possible using big data. Learning from experience improve as more and more and more examples are considered. But obviously, we know that too many data is not the best option, as the model may be overfit in sample and hence work poorly out of sample. Now let's see a very brief overview of neural nets. Inspired by evaluated artificial neural networks simulate neurons in the brain, each of which applies receives a number of inputs, applies a function, and produces an output O, shown in this figure. Each neuron applies weights to its inputs and includes an activation function. The activation function introduces nonlinearities to the output, which are required for any other nonlinear regression. These neurons are connected via their inputs and outputs in various ways. They use a feed-forward network for their research. A feed-forward network is organized in a series of layers, each of which contains at least one neuron. The first layer of neurons consists to the original inputs to the model and the last layer to the outputs, where n subindex n minus 1 is the number of nodes at layer n minus 1 of the neural network. And the superscripts i and j denote the node number in any layer. The values bj are known as the bias parameters of the node. The parameters of the model that are to be fit at the n minus th layer are as follows. A quick count shows that between layers n minus 1 and n, there are m subindex n for m subindex n minus 1 less m subindex n parameters. The net input as subindex n j is then passed into a non-linear function to generate a single output. This is the activation function and in this paper they use three types. The exponential linear unit, the rectified linear unit and the leaky rectified linear unit. Now we're going to explain the importance of deep learning in the field of finance and it is, and it is very important here because first of all it is, is the availability of a large amount of information that no other streaming has. Also 
the speed in the application using finance it's another advantage and the third one is that it helps to identify and understand some patterns to predict output the answer is no linearities most econometric models today are linear functions or the transformations of linear functions however the relationship between inputs and outputs may be hugely non-linear this is what a deep learning neural net is added at picking up as the data is passed from one layer to the next it is transformed into new data and the layer of non-linearity get peeled away this suggests that deep neural net can learn almost any function to a high degree of accuracy. Well, now let's talk about the deep learning for option pricing. The Black and Scholes and Merton formula is probably one of the most widely cited and used in finance. It has led to a huge number of variations and extensions. The formula is used to price call and put options. It is the solution to a special partial differential equation first derived in Black and Scholes. The model starts from assuming a specific form of movement for the stock price, namely a geometric Brownian motion, and it's based on the conditional payment at maturity of the option. The rates, the partial differential equation that must be satisfied to meet a specific economic constraint, such that the arbitrage is unadmissible. And yes, option traders understand that the geometric and Brownian motion assumption is violated in practice, and therefore they use other models that are extensions of the VSM. In addition, prices from these extended models that we said before are further adjusted using trader judge. And as a consequence, prices in the markets do not come exactly from the BSM. However, market data is plentiful, so it's possible to train an algorithm to learn the function that is collectively generating option prices in the market. Well, this was the first attempt by Hutchinson and other authors in 1994, and they demonstrated that a neural network is an excellent algorithm with which to approximate the market's option pricing function. First, mathematical inventions have vastly extended the type, scope, and or understanding of neural networks. Now, to revisit the main ideas, the principal improvements are twofold, so that we may use these new methods to revisit the original problem that Hutchinson and other authors examine. Second, neural networks with many layers are able to capture subtle non-linearities in data that were not possible with more or less linear statistical approaches. And because these neural nets contain many layers, they are known as deep learning nets and pose several computational difficulties in the past. Now, let's see the analysis of this paper. Hutchinson explored using neural nets to learn the famous Black and Scholes option pricing formula, also developed and analyzed by Merton. Using limited computing power and relatively small neural networks, they were able to show remarkably good performance in mimicking this following equation from simulated data. S is the current stock price, K is the option to strike, T is the option maturity. Q and R are the analyzed dividend and risk free rates respectively. Finally, this is the analyzed volatility, the standard deviation of the return of on the stock. Now, in order to create data for the assessment of how deep neural net will learn this equation, this paper simulated a range of call option prices using a range of parameters shown in this table. The data was divided into two random sets, one for the training and one for the validation. Before passing the prices to the deep learning net, there was a phased 
exploded of the black and salt skull option function that the pricing function is linear homogeneous in this therefore the equation looked like this the data was modified by dividing both stock price s and gold price c by strike price k this normalized data was then fed into the deep learning net to feed the input variables s k T, Q, R, and standard deviation to the output prices C. The details of the deep learning net are as follow. The size of the input is six parameters. These are passed through four hidden layers of 100 neurons each. The neurons at each layer are chosen based on different activations functions that are this respectively. The final output layer comprises a single output neuron which we set to be standard exponential function because it is needed to be output to the neural net to be non-negative with certainty as option prices cannot take negative value. It was chosen some simple hyperparameters for the deep learning net. At each hidden layer we use a dropout rate of 25% to ameliorate overfitting. The entire exercise results in feeding a total of 31,101 coefficients for the deep learning model. The model was trained using Google's TensorFlow package. The results are as follows. In sample pricing error, the root mean square error is this which may be compared to the fact that the strike prices are all normalized to $1. The average percentage pricing error is this. Also, it was estimated a regression of the model values of the Black-Scholes equation on the true values and attach an R square equals this, which this is very high. In the out-of-sample pricing error, the root mean square error is also this with an average of error of positive or negative 1% of the strike. The average percentage pricing error is this. They estimated a regression of the model values of the Black-Scholes equations on the true values and attached an R squared this, which is very high also. Well, since the results from the in-sample test and those out-of-sample are the same, no overfitting was evidence. It was also investigated if the error was correlated with the option price or the moneyness of the option. Other than for very small option prices where the percentage error tends to be magnified, moneyness is not correlated with pricing error, as you can see. Finally, this figure plots the actual price against the predicted price of each option, yielding a narrow line with very few deviations indicating very few significant error in pricing. And now, after showing all this information, let's talk about the last point, the concluding discussion. The confluence of mathematical analysis improvements in hardware and software. And the ubiquity of big data to train neural network models have brought artificial intelligence into the second new age. Now, the authors argue that deep learning applications such as image classifications are machine learning problems that may be ported to finance applications. They offer a brief overview of the ideas in artificial intelligence, deep learning, and then proceed to show how these models may be mapped to a canonical problem in finance, that of option pricing. The experiments show that the simple deep learning nets can learn to price options with very low error. This architecture can easily be extended to pricing options in the real world, with not knowledge of the theory of option pricing. New technology has commoditized the use of deep learning, so it can be very easy for an invest manager or trader to implement this model.